Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, this video here is going to give you some tips for leveling up in the Mousetrap Car 2.0 challenge that uh, White Box Learning um, Nationals has, has offered to us. So uh, before we get started, let's talk about what some elements are in uh, leveling up. Always start with your research. Um, there are 100 points assigned to the research component of this challenge, and those 100 points will follow you from um, level one on up through level five. So it's really important that you do all of your research on here. It's really important that you take all of the quizzes in here. And, and even further, use the help tutorials. Always go to the help interface and, um, and complete each of these tutorials because they give you credit for looking at this. Plus, this is going to uh, guide you and, and assist you in uh, using the interface overall. Um, in addition, the research is going to give you the tricks that you need to make successful designs, especially down here, the knowledge at work section. Um, really important that you, you go through each of these elements as it's going to give you tips uh, that will make you successful on the engineering side of things. Um, let's look over here at this particular test student. Uh, this test student is on level two, almost ready to clear out level two. Uh, they just need four more points, and they're able to level up. What's involved in level up? Level up um, is, is looking at three areas, your grades, your design iterations, and your overall performance. So uh, the grades are, are one of the easiest things you can um, control. You have the ability to go back and uh, retake tests uh, or quizzes, and um, and so there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to uh, get 100% here. Um, take a look at what you've missed, uh, review it in the research, and then go back and retest the quiz. Um, so you have 100 points there. Iterations. These are your designs. And uh, it says you can earn up to 50 points towards your overall level score by uh, creating inspect design iterations. And... Um, if you get 10 or more of these, you can get full credit. So on the level, to, to get full credit here, it wants 10 different design iterations, 10 different design iterations that pass the specifications, and that's critical. In spec, it has to satisfy all the spec uh, specifications in the challenge, and you get 50 points there. Performance. Um, what they're looking at here is to take a design iteration and make it better. And so you're getting... Uh, credit for for ensuring that um, your changes uh, improve the performance of the car, not make uh, the car worse. So those three basic things, the overall grades from your research, um, the more iterations, the better. And if you think in terms of engineering, engineers uh, make multiple iterations and improve on existing technologies. So more designs, the better. Also, the stronger the learning piece is for it. And improve the performance. Make it, um, make it function better, and that shows you've truly learned. So uh, in getting started um, with this challenge, I'll close out of uh, our level here. We would say we've completed our, our research, and let's jump into the engineering piece. Now, as you're first starting out in the engineering, I recommend you do the engineering tutorials. Follow the steps that are uh, written out here. This walks you through your overall orientation, and um, they give you credit for completing uh, the tutorials itself. So do each of those tutorials as you go through the engineering. I'm going to close that out for now. Um, as we get started here, uh, it is so important that you uh, know what your specifications are. Know what you're designing to. So I'm going to turn these little eyeballs on. This is the default car that, um, that comes, in this case, with level two. And um, we're going to turn the outputs on for that car and look and compare and see what we have. Okay, so when we're looking at the design specifications, you need to consider uh, the minimum and maximums in, in each of the areas here. Um, we're looking at the chassis, that's the frame length and the frame width. We're looking at the total overall width. This would include the width of a, of a tire, a wheel, and uh, the width of the axle itself. You're looking at the axle size, the axle diameter. And uh, on the rear, if you put a spool on there, that changes your axle diameter. 
Um, you're looking at the front wheel diameter, the rear wheel diameter. You're looking at how far that axle is located from the end of the vehicle. So the rear axle position, how far is it from the end of the vehicle? In this particular spec, the minimum is 10 millimeters and the maximum could be 25 millimeters. Um, where is that hole located, the center of that hole? The wheelbase is the distance between the front axle and the back axle from center to center and uh, the length of the lever arm. These are factors in your design that do affect the performance and there are minimum and maximums that are set up in each of the design envelopes. These specifications are the specifications for level two. Level one has a different set of specifications. I think level one you're designing a speed car for a seven meter track um, and you're limited on the um, wheel size. I think you can only use the uh, racer style wheels like we have in class. Um, and level two, we're still doing a speed car. Uh, it's a shorter track. It's a five meter track. And um, you're allowed a slightly bigger uh, wheel diameter here in the um, front and the, the back. So as we advance through each of the levels, you're going to see a different type of car you're designing for. As we go up to level three, um, we're going to get more into the touring aspect um, of making a distance car. Um, and level four and level five will also have uh, different design specs. So important to consider your design specifications um, before you even start building. Look at um, where the defaults set you and what's in spec and what's out of spec, and then try to fine tune uh, that. So let's focus solely on bringing this car to spec. Um, the frame rail, the frame lengths are too long. It's at 304. Um, we're going to bring that down to 275. We're going to make our maximum length and, and we'll see how that changes it. So we'll go over to the engineering here, uh, turn all your eyeballs on and, and show the car as it's uh, set up. And you want to look at the chassis. And um, so there are four different car body styles. Um, a speed car is a rally car. Um, you could also get into the custom size for, for uh, speed as well. But um, we'll stay with this, and we just want to bring this down to 275, 275, and we will apply that. You saw the car got a little bit shorter. Um, let's take a look at those uh, output specifications and see how did that affect uh, my change. So I see my car is now completely in spec. Nothing over here is red. Um, however, the car did not cross the finish line. And, and so it's still considered an out-of-spec car. We won't need this car to cross the finish line. So let's look at we, what we can do from an engineering standpoint to try to make this cross the finish line. So go back into your engineering mode here and um, we'll close, <coughs> I'm gonna click done here for my uh, main chassis. And let's do a, a general analysis here to see what we can do to improve the performance of this car. I'm gonna open the performance chart here, the performance analysis chart. And this gives me a lot of information about this car. Um, I see that the force of the mousetrap is, is being applied to the car uh, over a course of three seconds. And um, in those three seconds, it's carrying a distance uh, to where the green turns to red. It's, carrying, it, it's covering a distance of 3.6 meters. Um, I see that the uh, velocity or the power that's being applied uh, is increasing. It's accelerating. Uh, until that power stops and then it de decelerates in the coasting uh, section here. In all, my car uh, just barely is shy. It's uh, at, at 4.43 meters uh, and the distance is five. So what can I do to change that? Well, let's take a look. Often friction, uh, reducing friction is one of the easiest ways you can increase the performance of your car. So let's take a look here at the friction chart. Let me close out my performance chart for the moment. And when I look at friction, it says here the rear bearing is accounting for 67.8% uh, of the friction. Well, I know that the default doesn't have a rear bearing in it at all. Let's take a look at the rear axle. And uh, we see here that on the rear axle, there is no bearing in place. So how might that change that? So Let's take uh, and put a laminated tube in here. This is uh, like one of those wax coated straws. Um, we'll put the laminated tube in and uh, let's hit apply. You see that greatly brings down the friction. Now, when I did that, it also changed my performance curve here. And now over a much shorter period of time, we're applying power and then the car's coasting. 
Also, look, the distance that this car covered was 10 meters. So I know I've satisfied my output, um, and we can just double check that with our outputs. Design specifications. Okay, I've satisfied that. Um, I can enter this car in a race. I have a in-car uh, specification. Let's go to enter this, and that's going to greatly help me in terms of um, my, my overall level points. So we're going to go over here to uh, File, and we're going to uh, save this. Let's go ahead and give it a name. We'll just call this one Concept2. And uh, maybe you put uh, a note in terms of what you made a change on. And we can just say laminated um, bearing. Okay, and uh, oops, spelled that wrong. And then just go ahead and save this and, and enter it in the competition. And then you can race that against your peers. Um, in terms of your leveling, it improved my uh, test students' uh, level performance. Um, and because it was an iteration, I just need to race it to uh, get those four more points to uh, level up. So good luck with that, and hopefully that helps you.